All right, so I'd like to start off with how my opponents were talking about um, the Hippocratic Oath, which is the oath that doctors take to only help and not harm people. But physicians do not fulfill the role of a killer by prescribing drugs that has some debt any more than they do when they disconnecting life support systems. And according to Peter Tyson, um, the editor of NOVA, physicians claim that principles enshrined in the oath never constituted a shared core of moral values. Um, the oath had pagan origins and moral caste make it uh, unethical to beliefs held by Christian Jews and Muslims. Other note that the classical Hippocratic oath makes no mention of such contemporary issues as eth ethics of experimentation, team care, or doctor's uh, legal responsibilities. Um, another thing that my opponent Alexa brought up is that uh, doctors are harming many and helping less. But actually, according to the um, Death with Dignity National Center, it is calculated that death by physicians uh, assisted suicide was 6 per 10,000 deaths in 1998 and 9 per 10,000 deaths in 1999. Um, also, they were talking about the doctor and patient relationship and how the doctor is forced to be killing these people. But as we, me and Cassandra have been saying the whole time, is it's the patient's decision and they know the risk before they're going in. They know that they could live longer than that, but the suffering is so bad um, that they're willing to take the risk to end it. Uh, also, is as they're talking about euthanasia too, uh, the major form of that is lethal injection, which can go wrong and can be painful, but uh, with physicians-assisted suicide, what happens is when they take the medicine, they gradually slip into a coma and uh, using a comfort approach and but if they didn't do that some patients may uh, are forced to live on the edge of death uh, for months and even weeks and then that was what my opponent Edward said um, why can't we just take our life the other way why would someone want to uh, I don't want to be too graphic but hang themselves in that way in a painful way rather than uh, die peacefully in their sleep and also, he was talking about the Netherlands and how their system got unregulated. But in Oregon and Washington, they regulate their systems, and there's many requirements that you have to meet before you go with physicians-assisted suicide. Also, before the actions are taken, the doctors do give other options. So it's not directly to, let's just do physicians of suicide. They give other options, they try them, and after everything's exhausted and they don't want to try anymore, then <coughs> physicians assisted suicide. <coughs> also, one more point I'd like to state is my opponent Alexa brought up about how if they have depression, but actually, um, if either physician believes that the patient's judgment is impaired by a psychiatric or psychological disorder, the patient must be referred to a uh, psychological examination. So if they do have depression or anything, they can't go through with uh, physician's assisted suicide. So it's only for terminally ill patients. So why is it considered uh, ethical to die in natural cases after a long heroic fight illness filled with unnatural life prolonging medication uh, intervention and why is it unethical to allow patients to take charge of their own life after ending a long illness and to choose to die painless, painlessly and peacefully. So that's why me and Cassandra are advocates for uh, legalizing physician-assisted suicide in the United States. Thank you.